Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm Sean, and that over there is Brian. What's How's up, it going, everybody? man? Hey. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a quick one today, guys, because, you know, y'all are seeing a lot of us lately. We're awfully busy over here with these Discovery episodes and whatnot, and uh, with me being out of town and whatnot. That, that just Trying to get you caught up on Fallout. You trying to get me caught up on Fallout? Yeah, man. It's uh, I've been in a little bit of a whirlwind, and I'm just now starting to feel like that whirlwind is dying down. Uh, so, yeah, not a lot to talk about today. Just wanted to make sure we got something <laughs> so you out there. Say. Well... We don't know yet, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is going to be a very fluid episode. Uh, what, what is it called? Stream of consciousness episode. Yeah. So, um, but before we get into everything, guys, please remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the dislike button, leave us a comment. Feedback, feed the algorithm. That's right. We need that feed. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, in the last year, we have heard from Jared Padalecki and uh, Jensen Ackles that they've been at a couple of cons in the past year where it's come up about whether or not the show Supernatural that they are so famous for was dead and gone or if they were ever going to come back to it. And I have heard twice now, at least two different times, two different interviews with them that it's very clear that when they stopped the show back a few years ago, that they both decided, well, hey, look, it's going to be the what what anniversary in 2025? I don't know. Or no, it'll be five years that they've left the show, I think it was, okay, in 2025. So that was like a good number for them to come back after five years. And that's the way they've always had it in their heads. And they know so 2020 20 year anniversary of the first season. There you go. Well. There you go. So um, they basically know that's around the corner and they're, they seem to be pretty adamant that they're down to do it and it's oh, yeah. going to happen. So uh, well, I've always loved that IP. I, I don't think that there's ever been anything that, uh, they have you know felt done wrong by you know there have there have been a number of stinker episodes right yeah. oh yeah yeah uh, and that's about they to will even admit to that but they're 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 still very very attached to the ip yeah anytime something's going on they're like yeah i'm down right well absolutely i mean first of all 16 years they did this show 15 seasons and this this made these guys you know i mean each one had done something previous you know uh they they all had their little things going on but this show made these guys yeah. and uh it made them filthy rich as well so they weren't stupid they were having fun doing what they were doing they both liked each other i would say that there is one exception you could say that i know you're talking about the two two brothers you know you know the titular brothers uh but i mean you could say that about a lot of the people that were in this oh sure arguably even broke mark shepherd into the american audience right well yeah actually battlestar galactica did that too yeah for it sure. did but that was also one of those where if you're not an ultra nerd you weren't you know, really into battlestar yeah yeah i don't know well i don't know man that battlestar really came across a lot of people i don't know i i as I understand it, most normies think it's a piece of trash. Really? I don't know. I, well, maybe so. Maybe it's true. Uh, I just remember it being huge. And maybe that was just with the big nerd revolution. I don't know. Cause it was I think it was. Of, I think it was all nerds were like, ooh, I love this. It's yeah. another IP. Well, I mean, if you think about it during that whole thing, I mean, it wasn't a uh, you know, nerd revolution. You had the Harry Potter stuff going on, Lord of the Rings, and all that stuff. You know, um, yeah. It, it's like nerd fever, not to mention all the superhero shit. It's just going crazy. It all gets a revival, right? Yeah. Here and there. But anyway, so, uh, Supernatural, first three seasons had uh, one of my favorite actors who I can think of definite roles he's been in that I didn't care much for. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. 
And let's see, he was who did he play? So he was their father. Okay, yeah. In Supernatural. Now, now that's uh, also the same dude, right? That's the uh, uh, shit, the zombie show, right? In that Walking Dead. Walking Dead, isn't that the Keegan guy or whatever? Negan. Negan, yeah. See, I've never yeah. ever watched that show, so I only know from just what I hear. But uh, yeah. I knew he was in that show, yeah. He only did uh, three seasons with them. He had done other stuff. He was apparently a Zindi reptilian in Star Trek Enterprise, 2003. I think I knew that. I think I did. I did that. not. Only because uh, I... he was Samurai in the Angel series, 2002. ER. Uh, sliders. Uh, I don't really remember him from Sliders. That was yeah. Sid in 96. So. Well, they, he definitely, uh, The Walking Dead made him for sure. I mean, like he got, he was very popular with the Supernatural crowd. But right. like The Walking Dead is where he made his name. Because I just started hearing about Negan this, Negan that, you know. Well, I don't definitely... know. I mean, I think this did it for me. This was where, you know, I I paid attention to him. Uh, Watchmen, as the comedian, I thought he did a phenomenal job with that role. Uh, you Watchmen's know, despite it being movie. so different from, you know, the comic, supposedly. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that his delivery on the performance was great. Yeah. No doubt. And for me, when we speak of Battlestar, you know, uh, that Mark Shepard definitely was one of my favorites. Yeah, um, yeah uh, Battlestar, uh, of course, big. This was big. He was also in um, the DC one. Oh, uh, DC Heroes of... Uh, what the hell was it called? It's not Heroes of Tomorrow. It was, it was, it was Doctor Who for America. When it first started, it was literally Doctor Who. Uh, an American uh, ripoff of Doctor Who. That show, DC Legends of Tomorrow, or something like that. I think that's well, that it. Is a, a kind of a Doctor Who ripoff. I could see that. I didn't know if he was in that. He may have been in that, but I never really watched. Oh, was that not what you were talking about? Well, it had the, it even had uh, Rory from Doctor Who in it, wearing a, a, a big trench coat, just like David Tennant in the first season. It was so, and their ship was just like being in a TARDIS. It was such a Doctor Who ripoff, dude. I never saw that. I I saw bits and pieces. I know they picked up uh, some of the people from the Flash and the Arrow. Yeah, on the CW. Yes, they did. Yeah, Um, and and past the first season, I can't say whether that continued because I think Roy kind of. All right, I don't know. I can't remember the actor's name, but uh, I think he may have disappeared after the first season or whatever. He didn't last long. But when it started out, yeah, it was it was clearly a Doctor Who ripoff. So you should, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. So like the one I'm talking about, actually, uh, Niles Calder uh, was kind of the progenitor of these group of losers, kind of like the Teen Titans uh, in the DC universe. Um, oh, I, is that is that the one with the uh, where Brendan Fraser does the voice of one of the characters? Yes, he does yeah, the voice yeah. of the robot. I call it like an episode or two of that. Yeah, I don't know that why was just, I'm drawing a, I haven't watched it since it ended. It was I just guess team, that's It was just Titan. Titan. No. There is a Titan series that they did, but it, it, was, a, it was a different thing. But this it was tied was, to it, wasn't it? Huh? Wasn't it tied to it somehow or something? Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, all the IP is tied. They even did an episode of this with a Teen Titans tie-in. I, I know what you're Titans talking about, Go, though. Maybe. I do know the show you're talking about, but it is totally lost on me. Yeah. But um other notable characters, Metatron, Booger from Booger uh, from the Revenge of the Nerds. Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, also, I mean, this guy. Uh I guess that that's probably what broke him, right? Oh, definitely. Definitely, no doubt. Because he was I'm in trying most to remember, of the I, remakes I wanted too. to say there's something else we know him from. It's Curtis Armstrong. Ah, uh, yeah, I want to say too, but yeah, you know, I mean, I did, I'm just want to. It could be just the other revenge movies because he did them all. I think he did them all. Uh, he did a great job as Metatron. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I loved his uh, snivelly, backstabby, uh, whiny little bitch routine mm-hmm. of uh, playing the Metatron. I thought that was great. Yeah, he but was I mean, really he good. was in uh, Ally McBeal. 
uh, and like just a bunch of stuff like that. Murphy Brown, Moonlighting. Wow. Uh, just probably people that just want to, you know, see that guy, you know, Hey, it's that guy. I, I, I see what I remember him from before the revenge of the nerds, which was 1984 was the first revenge of the nerds. Mm-hmm. 1983 was a big movie with Tom Cruise called risky business. Oh, risky business. And he was Miles. Do you remember Miles? I don't, man. It's been so long since uh, it's been so long since, since I've, I've seen, seen it. it. I, I'm trying to remember if he was like the friend or the drug dealer. I want to say he was drug a drug dealer. dealer. Yeah, I think that's it. I kind of yeah. when you said that, it's almost like he, I got a mental image of him for a second. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that was the first time we ever see him, and then he's Booger next. Wow. But yeah, you know, you and I were talking earlier and um, we were saying like how the first, there's a first set of seasons. I think you said, what, about six seasons? And it, it, like from starting out, it's got a very different feel to it. Like when, when Supernatural first starts out, it's like each episode, there is an arc to all these in a way, but it's not so, I don't know what's the word. It, 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 it's more subtle. Um, it's just a kind of a continuing story throughout the whole show, really that arc, but, um, every episode just had a creature of the week kind of deal. Right. And that was cool. Cause you're uh, every year, you you, you know, every week you're like, Oh God, I know about these creatures, you know? And, and it's just like, wow. After a while, you're like, where are they, they keep coming up with these creatures. And, and it was and maybe that's why it changed. I don't know. But, you know, yeah, you say it after about six seasons, it, it it starts to get more into arc stuff and big stories and, you know, these these massive stories that are hell to keep up with, dude. For well, me. it was a very odd thing to me to see, like, it was a very vanilla take on the supernatural, right? Because it was a very Christian and demon thing. Yeah. Very central on that. Most of the um, mythology that they absorbed was kind of hodgepodge, pulled from here and there, and yep. um, they were know. learning. Yeah, too. there was not necessarily consistency in the end with everything. Yeah, um, after a while, they knew too much. Yeah, and and then they got the men of letters stuff. You know, they start having that whole thing going on. So there's a big arc there. Um, right. Eventually, what well, basically when it starts getting into the devil and and that kind of thing and and Crowley and you know well, in the I mean, later Crowley seasons was fairly early on and when he was early yeah. on that was fine. I'm not sure about Crowley's mother. I'm I'm not sure how to feel about Minerva. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like when it started getting into multiple characters and yeah. we, you know it was just like and like you say we did have the the devil and all that from the beginning, but uh, it just got. It just got bigger, I guess, more <laughs> more out of control with all the different fringe characters and stuff like Minerva. Yeah, uh, um, I did like what they did with uh, Rob Benedict, uh, who you may not just remember by the name, but he's also a, a kind of an old hand. What did he? What character did he play? He played Chuck Shirley, uh, which oh, was cool the creator of their supernatural books what oh yes 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 books. yes yeah i love him he is uh he's the dude from waiting the, the i can't piss in front of people dude yes yes yeah uh, also in the mentalist weird uh yeah. psych psych's great show yeah yeah absolutely great as far for nerd if you're a nerd you would definitely like psych all kind of uh, nerd he was in burn notice too i forgot about that house he was doing uh, all waiting the, the monk stuff at the time. alias medium NCIS. I like him. There's something about his face and the, the, just the way he is. It, it, it's just likable. He's very cool. Uh, so he makes a, he's a great author, which ends up being God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so uh, that was cool. I ultimately thought that that was a well, uh, well played out thing because it wasn't obvious. You always questioned, is he God? You kind of thought maybe. But you didn't know for sure, and they finally gave it to us. So I thought that was pretty cool. And it's a sin now that I'm looking at it. I think. To play God? I'm not sure I'm not seeing 
a top billing for Loki. Yeah, that dude was uh, really good, too. There yeah. were some great stories with Loki. They were playful stories. I love stuff like that, man, in shows. Well, um, Star Trek did it well those. with the Tribbles, you know, episodes. Yeah. It's just fun to have those kind of episodes in. Well, the ones with the featuring the tricksters, they were always shot different. Uh, they were wrote, written differently. Like they were, they were could be t- taken out of the series, and that's what made them great. Is because they were kind of unique to be in those trickster. Yeah, trickster, it was like doing it in cartoon or something. Yeah, trickster episodes. Yeah, yeah, they were they were fun. Really were fun. Um. But yeah, the I was just thinking about. I, I guess the reason this came up is is because I was thinking in the last couple of weeks that I'm starting to get to where we watched it so much, you know, that it's hard to get my wife to watch it now, and I can probably watch it again really easily. But we did watch it a lot, so yeah. I'm I'm getting near ready to watch it again, and I hope she gets there with me. But I don't I don't. It's not gonna be next week. It's not gonna be next month. But I feel it on the horizon soon. And then, you know, if, if they do hold true to their 2025 deal, then uh, I definitely want to get as many in as I can before. Because I really, oh, gosh, especially in like 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, those seasons, dude, I missed so many. There's like Same. whole like weeks of stuff that I didn't see. I mean, once they introduced Jack, uh, I kind of like, yeah, don't remember a whole lot after that. Agreed. Uh, I, it kind of feels like to me the Amara is kind of like the area where the show started to change a little bit. Yeah. Um. But to me, it was always decent. Uh, you know, always had had a varying amount of camp to it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Sometimes it could be super serious, and then other times it was just like. Totally not at all. Dude, the, like, you remember at the end of one of the episodes? How do you episodes, get hey ass butt anywhere else, right? Right. You remember at the end of one of the episodes where they were like, uh, uh, where, uh, is it Jensen that does the rising up out in the street? I have the tiger, yeah. Yeah. That's just hilarious, dude, it at is. the it's end of that funny. episode where he does that. But he, I think with fondness, the reason I want to watch these again is is for those early seasons. Because when right. I first saw that show, man, it was just like, it had a grittiness to it. I was going to say, those first three uh, did have a different feel, and it was kind of gritty. I don't know if I would necessarily point to, like, a Frank Miller-inspired grit or, like, anybody else, necessarily. It was kind of its own thing, right? Yeah, no doubt. But, it, yeah, um, it just... I don't know. It had a different. It had a different look, like the the cinematography and everything. It just felt different. It had a. Whole but it different... was more like a noir technique than anything, right? Because it wasn't. There was some gore, some splatter, right? Makeup work. There was some of all of that, if I recall correctly. Oh yeah, you got your creature. But not you over the top, right? No, it wasn't too bad. Sometimes, like you said, you got the camp stuff. So yeah, you can get in there, but. That that's later more than anything, right. but there was still some, you know, early on. I think but, as far uh, as the grit is concerned, is the way the mother dies. That's pretty hard. hard yeah, yeah, hard yeah. wrenching, right? Yeah, they uh, yeah they start out strong like that. And the the first uh, antagonist. Uh, well, I wouldn't even say it's the first because I would consider the first kind of like the setup, the crossroads demon, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, which yellow eyed demon. Which makes me think, you know, if we were bigger, we'd get tons of feedback if I didn't say this, that I need to re-emphasize uh, that they had arcs from the get-go. Oh, yeah. I know that. Uh, it's just the way they did it back then, it was just more subtle. It wasn't, you could miss an episode and not be fucked. You miss an episode and and after season 10 or whatever, you wouldn't, Yeah. Of course, they have recaps, which is hel- helps. But you know, yeah. assuming you didn't have recaps and whatnot, it'd be hard to miss an episode because there's just so much going on with so many different characters. It was just simpler. It was fundamental back then. 
Yeah, when Minerva, Minerva came on, I kind of felt that way about it. Like the the timelines were diluted, basically, right? Yeah. Too much going yeah. on in different spaces that I really wasn't that concerned with. Yeah, I mean, it's like, how the fuck? It almost becomes un... I mean, it's it's sci-fi. It's, you know, it's supposed to be unbelievable. But there is a point where you question how much saving the fucking universe people can do. You know? Well, yeah, like after season five, we figured out that Jensen Ackles is actually playing a character from a Marvel, probably an X-Men series or something like that, although he doesn't have superpowers. Yeah. Although he's always revived after he dies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's Marvel genius for the C or Jesus for the CW. The, the, the amount of times they've gotten out of shit. I mean, dude, and I'm talking like end of the world shit. The world is over type shit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't mind. Obviously, I'm a huge science fiction fan. I don't mind unbelievability, but uh, when it comes to science, it has to be believable as much as possible that you can. But um, I don't know. I think you just can't right you this. just can't overdo it to where I'm just going to not accept certain things, you know, that, that are just that we understand as yeah. laws of the universe. I did like the fact that they made a lot of the vampires a lot more messy than some other IPs did. I kind of hated their vampires. I wasn't a big fan of the vampires overall, so to speak. They, uh, they were kind of interesting, you know, the, the alpha was towards the end. Uh, but, you know, they were, like I said, they were messier than most vampires you see, right? Yeah. Or is it the vampires or the werewolves? I, mean, you know, I think it was. The vampires vampire. are, and werewolves are both pretty rough, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. That's what I kind of remember both. just like. Which eh. is a tragedy, because this is supposed to be from White Wolf, right? This is supposed yeah. to be from uh, uh, an IP, if you're not familiar with it. Um, vampire, the Masquerade, offshoot of that. Uh, I can't remember the name werewolf. of it, but it's you're, you're basically playing Hunters. It's White Wolf uh, Publishing. Uh, that handles it, and that's that's what these characters are, right? They are hunters. Yep. Uh, in this world, um, and I don't know where I was necessarily going with that, but you know, yeah. So, <clears throat> damn good show, man. Really good show. As, uh, obviously, I mean, like it didn't stay on for sixteen years. Because it was shit. So yeah, I mean, they kept coming back and kept getting viewers. So. And I think they would have still kept having them back if they wanted to, you know, continue yeah. on. And so hopefully, you know, well, within the next year, year and a half, or whatever, before the end of twenty twenty five, I would say that hopefully we'll get to see us again. And I really, I want to say on the record, I want it to be a new season, couple seasons, three seasons. It wouldn't hurt my feelings if they went another five years. And wrapped it up, and that was it. You know, um, I, also feel I definitely like it's want right territory season. for a reboot. Yeah. It is, but man, that's such a fucking thing to do, isn't it? It is. It's just I, I'm not saying right now. I think they're both kind of in a frame to where they can do it. Um, I don't expect Jensen's schedule uh is gonna interfere right <laughs> no and you know maybe maybe after my five years that i want um my theoretical five years maybe you do it just like how they always do it's their daughters that come up and then yeah it's a new show reboot or and another they got one for the girls which the girls loved you know uh supernatural probably more than the guys anyway but uh yeah that's just the way they do things nowadays. Reboot. Well, I mean, that's what I was saying, though, is also it being being kind of fertile ground for a reboot is it doesn't have to be that. It can be any number of, of like a group of hunters. You, you know, like I said, it's from a rich IP. Yeah. With, with a you know background, it could be somebody's character that they used to play in a campaign that is based off of, right? Yeah. True. So, but I mean, yeah, you could just do within the universe. That'd be fine. Maybe bring in. We saw some hunters along the way. Maybe bring give give one of those people a show. Be yeah. like, hey man, you want a show? <laughs> yes, please, God, please give me a show. But uh, 
Yeah. So, I mean, like th- that's all really we, uh, I want to talk about, man, is, you know, uh, maybe one day we'll do a, a real deep dive uh, more into some supernatural. Like uh, if I start watching again, maybe we'll talk about, you know, a season or something like that, like season one, because it's one of my favorite seasons, season one. Well, there's and- a tie in to uh, we mentioned The Walking Dead earlier. There is another Kirkman show. Uh, yeah, that has a tie in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. With Kripke, the boys, it stars Jim Beaver. Uh, who's also from this, and Jensen did a season. We have yet to see Jared in it. Uh, I'm wanting to say we've seen like two faces, right? Two other faces, maybe. I, I can't recall. I have to yeah, I can't more. recall. Um, but there's a chick that played uh, Amara was also in the Mandalorian, right? Yeah, she played the armor. Yeah, there was a lot of really great talent that went through that show, but like yeah. main cast and just supporting cast. So uh, Shepard was great in leverage. So yeah, it's it's a, all over the board. A great show, talented cast. If you get a chance, watch it. We like. Yeah, it. if you right. haven't, if you've been, if you lived under a rock when it aired, you must go and see this. Especially, you know, if you're watching us and like the stuff we like, you got to see it. No doubt. So uh, yeah, but until then, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. And while we're waiting and seeing what happens, in the meantime, you guys will be waiting for us to do another Discovery episode, for which we have to do uh, soon. Episode 5 of Discovery will be coming out. uh, And we got to wait on you to watch another episode of Fallout, right? Yeah, I have watched another episode, so uh, we'll see how we end up doing that. I I imagine it's just going to be a culmination of the whole season. You're going to binge it and Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably more than likely. So that that's how that'll probably shake out. So right, uh, uh, we'll try and watch two and three tonight, and just keep me updated with where you're at. Right on, man. Well, uh, yeah, guys. So in the meantime, as always, be excellent to each other. And Brian and I will see you on the flip side. All right. Thanks. Everybody. Yes, indeed. Peace out.